dress the riot to any of the marches? Does the media cast the riot to any of the marches? Yes, the media did. They, um, they highlighted the marches a lot. We marched in Denver just as much as, uh, well, when King marched to the nation's capital, he had a call out for all the churches to march to their respective capitals. And, uh, oh, they, they show that film footage over and over, a sea of people watching, marching to the Washington Monument. Uh, so I'm walking across that, that little pool area. And uh, as he's speaking, I mean, it was, it was like a, a force to deal with seeing that many people show up uh, at the nation's capital. But then each state had tons of people for it. And they knew at that time that they had to do something uh, about the civil rights. They, they couldn't let this go on. And perhaps they thought killing him would, would be it. Uh, on his tombstone, there's a scripture that reads, Come, let us slay the dreamer and see what becomes of his dream because of the, I have a dream of you. And that's also the scripture that's in the uh, I believe it's, uh, the scripture is in Oh, goodness. I want to say, um, I don't want to slaughter the scripture and make it seem like I was better for it. But anyhow, <laughs> it's also the scripture that was written for Joseph when Joseph's brothers got, um, I believe it's got to be Genesis somewhere, where they go and throw um, their brother in the well. Because Joseph was a dreamer. Uh, he had a dream uh, that their staff was going to bend down to his staff and so forth. And so they saw him. He was not to uh, be a sheep herder. He had to stay home and stay home and learn economics and finances. So when they saw him off by himself, they said, Come, let us slay the dreamer and see what becomes of his dream. So, um, yeah, they did. Show them out. I saw it broadcasted on TV. I probably didn't pay that much attention to it when it was live, but my parents did, and they thought, oh, well, he was such an articulate orator. And of course, after he got shot, it, it became more famous than it was. He was extremely articulate. He started um, college at 15, um, like myself. Uh, my trip was involuntarily. He started voluntarily at college at age 15. But when it was first done, they thought, is he trying to tell us something? And of course, after getting shot, they said, oh yes, he was trying to tell us something. So uh, that speech became the, um, the novation speech, uh, the most, one of the most prolific and popular speeches of all that he had ever done. It was a fun speech. Yeah, very sad. I don't remember, but I remember seeing them on TV over and over. I don't remember the day they went, and, and it must have been sometime around the, the time of my older sister Faye might have gone. But um, I remember seeing film footages of it. Yeah, I remember they had to go with guards. Yeah. Do you remember the black, the black Panther Party? And did you agree with the way they went about doing things? I do remember the Black Panther Party. I do remember uh, our own local activist, Hiawatha Davis, who started a youth center for uh, the kids in Denver, Colorado, and I got to be part of the youth center. I didn't get to be part of the party. Um, I don't agree with what they did in that uh, turning the other cheek, even though uh, you know it's a very difficult concept. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi and King, when they employed it, it made all the difference. It made a lot more difference than pipe bombs and guns ever did. That was the punch that got civil rights to its hallmark, and it was when the party passed. So you agree that everyone should have the more peaceful standards than violence? Well, 
And the Bible says that the times of everything in a present form to him. And I'm sure there was a time for that. I mean, it did get some things accomplished, but uh, they just didn't have, they were outpowered. <laughs> they were outnumbered. And so, um, I'm just saying there's, 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 there's a time for everything. There was the Civil uh, War, and uh, that was the war between states. And you know, the South and the North had just had enough. And they went to blows. They certainly didn't turn their feet. And if um, if things hadn't turned around, I think there would there definitely probably would have been another war in the nation mm -hmm. between races. So uh, I think they got someone's attention. Yeah. And last question. Did the events have any law any long lasting effect to you? Most definitely, because of the events, I was able to go to college, I was able to travel, I was able to go sit in restaurants and eat, I was able to take my children across state and go into uh, restrooms. I, I'll never know what it's like to um, go into a restroom and have be chased out and, and be told to go use the dirty one. I'll never be know what it's known what it's like to. Uh, I'll sometimes get up off the bus and go to the back unless I want to go to the back myself. I'll never know what it's like to uh, be told that I can't talk to my white neighbor or that my, my children can't play with anybody, any color, any race, any creed, any, any nationality. Um, again, I'm still oblivious. I am the product of the birthing of civil rights. And much like a childbirth, the children born out of that birth they don't experience the pain. I'm, I'm sure it was a, a nudge, but it was my parents uh, that went through the war and the trauma and the, the fear. And they did a, a good job when I was young of sheltering me from it. But the lasting change was uh, what we're experiencing right now and what my children experience is uh, freedom to vote freedom to travel wherever they want to travel, freedom to go to whatever restaurant they want to go to, and just the peace that they, they really will never know what it's like to, to have it unless it's taken away. And again, uh, I'll always believe in that when Rosa sat down, he was able to stand up. That's the end of his speech, I mean, interview. Thank you very much. You're welcome.